Of course, you remember Janet Jackson's infamous performance during the Super Bowl halftime show. In one single moment, her entire life was changed, and the phrase wardrobe malfunction reserved a permanent spot in the national consciousness. But you may not remember that Reba McIntyre had her own shocking and controversial wardrobe malfunction. Now, Reba may be the last gal you'd expect to make a controversy on stage. This Oklahoma original made a career off love songs. You know, down-to-earth country love songs, not exactly risque. So, was Reba's all-ages appeal just a facade? Because it turns out, years before Justin Timberlake helped Janet make a wardrobe malfunction, Reba McIntyre made headlines for spurning her family-friendly reputation during one infamous performance. So who was responsible for this mix-up? And what impact did the massive backlash have on Reba? We'll answer all these questions and more. But before we begin, make sure to hit that thumbs up icon so I don't have a wardrobe malfunction. And subscribe to our channel so you never miss any country content like this. Now you ready? Well grab a fan, because it's about to get real hot in here as we go find out. Rodeo Child While most country musicians make gestures at the rural lifestyle, Reba McIntyre is the last gal you could ever accuse of faking it. She grew up on a ranch in Oklahoma, an unincorporated community in the middle of nowhere. Instead of watching TV or going to the mall, Reba grew up castrating bulls and other fun activities. This down-home environment was where she would build her career as a singer, performing at rodeos with her family in their group, the Singing McIntyres. Reba's rural sensibility would guide her life for decades to come. Even as she grew in fame, her heartfelt music continued to reflect the simple but powerful emotions of country life. And her image was no exception. While other stars would blatantly use their sex appeal to sell records, Reba projected a much cleaner traditional image, preferring jeans to low-cut dresses. After all, she was a country singer, not a pop star. In an interview with Larry King, Reba once said, quote, You know, I can get kind of spunky or I can get tough. You know, that kind of tough, sexy look. But sexy? No, I don't think so. But this is where things take a change, big time. As the 1990s arrived, Reba's music became more and more popular to mainstream audiences, and the industry wanted her to reflect this change, to leave her comfortable country bubble and dive into the scary and controversial pop star world. But while Reba knew big changes were ahead, she could never have expected how drastically her entire life would change. 1993 the 1990s were a traumatic decade for Reba. In 1991, her entire life changed in the blink of an eye when a tragic plane crash killed eight members of her band. Of course, Reba was crushed, but vowed to carry on their memory in her music, dedicating her 16th album, For My Broken Heart, to those lost on that fateful day. Ironically, it was that bittersweet album that would really propel her into the stratosphere. In 1992, Reba put out her 17th album, It's Your Call. This was her first top 10 album. Amidst all this turmoil, Reba was scheduled to perform at the Country Music Awards in 1993. The performance, set at the Grand Ole Opry, should have been a comforting return to the familiar venue. She had been strutting her stuff at the esteemed location since 1977. However, the show would turn out to be anything but predictable. She had no idea that what was about to happen would outrage Nashville and the world. In the weeks leading up to the CMAs, Reba was sidelined by a foot surgery. She couldn't go about her business like usual. And as a result, she let her close friend and designer Sandy Spica make most of her decisions. Without her knowledge, Sandy decided to make some changes to the restrained image that Reba had maintained over so many years. But neither Sandy nor Reba could have any idea what these changes were about to unleash. It's showtime. The day had finally come. 
the 1993 CMAs. Before the show, Reba was preparing in her dressing room at the Opry. When it came time to try on her dress, she was shocked. She thought, maybe it's just the lighting. But she did consider turning around and leaving right there. But it was, of course, too late. One of the themes to Reba's career has always been the show must go on. And she knew she had no choice but to go out and face the music, as they say. So what was the deal with Reba's dress, you ask? First of all, it was a total 180 from everything fans had gotten accustomed to about Reba. Everything she represented. The dress had bold red fabric to match Reba's hair and featured a deep, revealing neckline that left very little to the imagination. But it wasn't just Reba's image. Country audiences weren't used to performers wearing such revealing clothing on stage. But in 1993, at the CMAs, it was definitely a big deal. Reba performed as planned, singing Does He Love You? along with Linda Davis at the CMAs. As usual, she gave a stunning, confident performance. But Reba's singing wasn't the focus of attention. It was that red dress. And the audience didn't even wait for her to get off stage to let her know how they felt. She could hear the jeering even as she performed. When the music stopped and Reba walked off, she was understandably relieved, but if she thought the whole ordeal was over, she was dead wrong. The Aftermath Countless people wrote into their local newspaper to air their grievances about Reba's dress. It was against the spirit of country music, they said. It was a betrayal of everything Reba stood for, they said. It was corrupting the youth, they said. Finding print inadequate for their outrage, many called into their local radio show to complain even more. People were really upset, but it was going to take a lot more to take down Reba McIntyre. Heck, she had just been through a horrible tragedy that most people can only imagine. She was not going to let a few angry letters stop her. And as they say, all publicity is good publicity. And so, Reba would continue to wear that dress throughout her career. Years later, Reba would say she got more press off that dress than if she had won Entertainer of the Year. In 2018, she wore the dress once more during a special Christmas performance, proving to the world that even a quarter century later, she still had it. This controversy about Reba's dress may seem a bit outdated or much ado about nothing, but it's a testament to how much times have changed, for better or for worse. It almost makes you miss the days when that was the biggest thing to be outraged about. But it also speaks to Reba's sheer beauty and magnetism, that she was able to make a dress that by our modern standards isn't anything that crazy, but she made it look so alluring and seductive. Decades later, Reba McIntyre is still doing her thing, still our country queen and not afraid to push the envelope always prepared to own the consequences. All right, that's enough of me. Now we need to hear from you. Do you remember this controversial performance? Did you think it was too much back in 1993? Do you think it's appropriate today? And what is Reba McIntyre's greatest song? I need a new good country playlist, so give me some recs. Before you head out, please hit that thumbs up icon to show us some support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.